Welcome to ARC. This is Pastor Benjamin R. Day. So good to have all of you wonderful people with us today. Uh, the great need today, and what I want to rebuke many people for in love, is we do not have intimacy. And by no intimacy, we don't have God's power. The world needs God's power. I'm going to be speaking on this today. And uh, hit the subscribe button. Follow us on Facebook. Keep receiving the now word from God. Empower those others by sharing this video and inviting them to be part of what God is doing. Also, we're going to be having communion. The Lord has instructed us to do this. And uh, hallelujah. So this is exciting. Also, those of you that are uh, partners with the ministry, um, the information will be on the screen. And behold how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. Paul spoke to the brethren and he said, I am looking for those that would partner with me. In other words, there's a co-laboring together. The thing about look at Elijah, Elijah was isolated and alone. And it required a widow who was isolated and alone to recognize the need of supporting the prophet. God didn't raise up the whole of Israel to support Elijah. God raised up a woman. It's not how many people are there. It's how many people are there in the spirit to listen. And I know many of you that have crossed pathways with this anointing, how God has raised you from the ash heap and how prayer has been made and how creative ideas have been birthed because the apostolic anointing births into reality. And through the instruction, the blessing comes. Some have tried to take the honor, but praise God, yes, we give the honor to Jesus. But there is a birthing through the anointing, and there is a reciprocal reality that takes place because the reason why God anointed that woman was to support the prophet. As with Elisha going through and the woman with her husband made room for the prophet and this rich woman in fact made room and supported his ministry and again God blessed her with a son God anointed her household because she made place she had more than enough and that connection was established that connection this is the thing about the apostles there are connectors between man and God. Moses was an intercessor. Elijah was an intercessor. So it is the anointing. There is the corporate anointing, which is for the body to anoint them to become revitalized, revived, and alive. But then there are the individual anointings, and these are the testers. These are the servants. These are the righteous men. These are the prophets. And these are the ones that God will send that we must be able to see. Amen. So welcome everybody. Also, the information is on the screen. And I know God has raised up partners and it's loyalty. You know, there's highs and lows in investments. But ultimately, we go into acceleration. I cannot tell you how many of the sons and daughters in the Lord are beginning to break through during this famine season and recession in the world. And I believe this for you too. You see, it's not about looking at the seasons and looking at the conditions, but it's about being obedient to the instruction and putting God first. In putting God first, you unlock realities that are made in heaven for you. Hallelujah. Praise God. So again, the information is on the screen, info at arc.tv and uh, donate at arc.tv, excuse me. So hallelujah.
I want to say this. The danger today is a lack of intimacy. And I want to rebuke, if there are any out there, that intimacy, you can be busy with the things of God, but you can be disconnected from intimacy with God. You can be busy doing, and I say this to even our staff members, you can be so be so busy doing the work of the ministry that you don't really have the intimacy. Intimacy is where the power lies. We have lost, many of us, our intimacy. And as God has instructed to make God's people prayer aware and the nation's prayer aware, it is to restore connection to the power source. God has called us to restore. Revival is a restoration. Something died. God wants to bring it back again to life. Thus, we must come back to our first love and come back and be made alive again. And that starts with discipline, intimacy. There is a mighty, sovereign, in time call from God. This call, this herald, has gone forth into the nations, gone forth around the world, gone forth in great strength, gone forth as a call to people to come back to Christ, calling the church, calling God's people, calling God's children into depth and intimacy with Him, calling God's people, calling His children into prayer, calling them into, into, into a deep realm of intercession, a greater realm than have been experienced in days gone by, to unlock a great insatiable desire a longing for the presence of God. How many feel this drawing to the Lord? Now, more than any other time, we are seeing this demonic agenda unveil itself. We see in the USA all these key strategic facilities that have been under attack. We're seeing the grain under attack. We're seeing the potential of many realities in war. And the, the church's great power of deliverance is to come back into the presence of God. It is not politics. It is instruction. In the presence of God, look at Moses. God said to Moses, as he was in the mountain of the Lord, symbolic of rising in heights, moving up into intimacy with God. As he moved into this deep level, this great high height in the Lord, there was a point, I would call this the pinnacle of the peak, where he had reached a beyond realm, and the Lord began to appear to him in a burning bush. While this burning bush, flaming, flaming fire of God, revealed to him the voice of God, he heard this word, take your shoes off, for the ground you're on is a holy ground. He began to remove his shoes. He moved into that place of communication, depth of the presence of God. And in that, then God began to grant and release his power. God began to show him what would happen with a stick. God said to him, put your arm in your robe, in your mantle, take it out, and it turned to leprosy, put it back. God began to show him, and he began to learn the voice of God. He, he learned the voice of the Spirit. Intimacy unlocks the power. Intimacy is communion, fellowship, and it must be the cry of, of your heart. Is it the cry of your heart? Is it what you are thirsting for? 
it was David that said, he said, in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water, he was talking about my heart thirsts for you as the deer pants for the water from the depths of my innermost being. There's a well spring exploding within me. Oh, Lord God, my heart belongs to you. My heart desires you. I long to see your face in all your glory, in the glory I've never experienced before. I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but there is nothing materially. There is nothing this world can offer that can compare to the great intimacy we can have with Jesus, with the word. Hallelujah. So Moses on this mountain received instruction in intimacy. I must make the statement that Christian politicians, uh, evangelists, prophets, and so forth, the church will not see change in the nations until we turn on and move on our knees into intercession, in intercession, in intimacy with the Father. And in intimacy with the Father, we will begin to see the veil removed. And that is where the glory of God comes down. For Moses went down that mountain a changed man. Moses came down that mountain with fire. Moses came down that mountain with glory. Moses came down that mountain with instruction. Moses came down that mountain with a rod and staff. Moses came down that mountain with, with direction. Moses came down that mountain and immediately began to uh, move towards the Farawake system. He was empowered with an instruction, a word from God. What today we need is not another message. And yes, there will be revival, but that revival is to bring us into intimacy, and intimacy is to bring us into a place of communication, communion between the wings of the cherubim, to know the voice of the Father. And in understanding the voice of the Father, then God will release us into the realms of the sphere where Pharaoh, the system of this uh, beast, has established itself. And heaven will come down. Glory to God. See, there's a day coming when Jesus shall appear. He will take his bride away. But and I know many of us is an intense desire, and we know God is preparing the bride. God is preparing each of us for his return in this end time prophetic prayer anointing that has been released. Already, God has released 142 nations around the world, all these various translations, and God has brought us into a sphere of breaking as the prophets are the forerunners to break the fallow ground, to prepare the people for this great revival, to move us into a deeper dimension with God, into a deeper dimension of intimacy. And so there's these great prayer movements, and God gave the word during that time that out of this many, many prayer movements would begin to come forth. And we're seeing around the world now millions upon millions have committed themselves to pray for a great revival, a global move of God, this great commission that the Lord wants to move through the church in. And this prayer has been a prayer call. It has been a call because this is the time of Jesus appearing, Jesus coming. Thus, we have moved into intimacy through prayer, intimacy with God, empowered by the Lord, empowered by the Lord through prayer. This is the story of Moses. Moses was on in the mountain of the Lord. You've got to understand the journey of going up into intimacy with the Lord. What takes place is you've got to go through a hard road. You go through much suffering. You go through much pain. You go through much rejection. You go through misunderstandings. You go through isolation. But in all of that, you begin to know him in the fellowship 
of his sufferings and the power of of his resurrection. Glory to God. There is only one way to the power. That's why I must rebuke many. Many are talking prayer, but there are not many in intimacy with the Father. Many like to, and I'm not against worship, and worship is part of it because it opens your spirit up, but prayer is communion with God. You can, in a way, prayer worship, but Jesus went on the mountain And he began to communicate with God. There, we must come through prayer. God has called a people to himself. He's called this generation to himself. The nations are longing for the manifestation of what is within us. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? He desires a new dimension of authority and power to operate in our lives that when we speak, think about this. When Moses spoke, the word was released and there was no returning void of the words which Moses spoke because when he spoke, it was not just a word of his own mind. Or emotions. It was a word that was birthed in intimacy with God. Folks, I want to say and I want to rebuke those that have been lazy in their walk with God. If you want to start, start five minutes a day, but build your tempo, build your reservoirs in prayer. Build your reservoirs in the Word. Build your intimacy with God. Don't expect anybody else to do it for you. We go to church to be pillars. We go to church to encourage and strengthen one another. But And this is what we're doing together online today. But we also must understand this is a time where God wants to anoint us to confront these powers. Philippians 3.10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. There's something so powerful that God desires to release through us, through our prayers. There's something that is so filled with power and authority that will explode through cities and nations and demolish strongholds that will destroy enemies, that will unlock the greatest harvest we've seen in the history of the church and the world. It requires intimacy. Thus I must say to us, our model is the book of Acts church. Thus I must again rebuke. If it's not your rebuke, you don't take it. But I must rebuke those that have been lazy. You see, we are so ensnared with knowledge and information, but we have no power. Power is released and revealed in union, union, communion. On your knees. Power and authority will only be released in a deeper and more intimate relationship with Jesus. And this must not be broken. This is a perpetual fire which cannot be broken. Must continue on. The world is in a great crisis. The word God gave me was there would be a disruption. There would be nowhere to go. In 2016, 
Then he said this, there would be a great crisis. This great crisis is ongoing. Then he said in 2020 to me of February, March, I I released that word. We are in a great reset. The Lord said it to me very clearly. This is a birth pang. Listen, I'm speaking as a prophet to God's people. These are the birth pangs for the great end time outpouring of his spirit. But at the same time, folks, that's why the war has been so intense. I cannot tell you since I started Pray for the World how the enemy has tried to come to wear out the saints, to attack men of God physically, to attack God's people. We will face some of the greatest demonic manifestations in a great confrontation realms of the demonic mankind has never experienced. You think of Moses against Pharaoh. Well, I want to say this. It's going to be on a whole nother level. It's going to be on a whole nother level. See, Satan doesn't know the moment of his demise, but he knows his time is limited. God's Spirit is working through his servants, through his people. Satan is working through his principalities, through his powers, working to stop God's people working to stop the work of God, working to wear you and I, to make us want to give in, make us want to give in and give up, to just retire, to give in to sin, to quit. I've seen some that I've loved, battle-weary and tired and how they've given up. Folks, the only way through is intimacy. Intimacy is prayer. Thus I must say, come on. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Get up. Get on your knees. Climb that mountain of the Lord. Recognize. Recognize what's going on. Recognize the war. Recognize the attacks. Know your spiritual authority. Know it, otherwise you will be overwhelmed by Satan. Otherwise, you will be weak in your stand and you will be surprised by the entrapments of the enemy. How many have been the target of satanic attacks? How many have experienced Every area of your life, dreams, nighttime, body, relationships, uh, uh, financial uh, temptations, all these things loosened all of the hells, we can call them angels, against your body, your family, financially. Your calling. That's why God said to me, as he woke me up early in the morning, said, I want you to raise up a prayer army. There one day will be a command setter. We trust God. I want you to get on the media. And I saw a small stone. And I'm glad that around the world, the subject man has changed from how much I can get away with in sinful lifestyles to 
intimacy is necessary in prayer, 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 prayer. But now I want to say it's not just a nice little slogan of prayer. It's now real prayer, prayer on your knees, prayer in the Holy Spirit, prayer in intimacy. You see, God said to Moses, take your shoes off because the ground you're entering in, this is what intimacy will bring you to. It ultimately brings you to the point where you lose all understanding. You lose your formula of how you think it's going to be and you move into the place where you covered in the Lord. And it's the only thing that grabs you is God's fire. Amen. Intimacy with God will expose the demonic agendas. Intimacy with God gives power to expose the enemy move before it happens. Intimacy with God grants power to the saints to engage in the heavenly realm and to recognize spiritual forces, those things that are praying against you. Intimacy with God will put you ahead of the enemy. You see the story of David where he lost his wives, he lost his children, he lost all of his men's wives, they lost all their goods, they were as good as done. It was at that point where all his men began to turn on him in 1 Samuel chapter 30 that the Bible said David inquired of the Lord. In that inquiring of the Lord, it was a point in time where God released a supernatural instruction. Come on, somebody. Showed him how to get ahead of the enemy. You see, there's things that God is going to give you that you will be way ahead of the enemy's plans if you know the voice of God. Are you with me today? If you know the voice of God, you will be way ahead of the enemy. Not five steps, not ten steps, but you'll be way ahead ahead of the enemy. Amen. So there are assaults that will be exposed. There are agendas that the Lord will expose against your family. That many a time God would say, do not get on that plane. Or God would say, do not go to that meeting. Amen. Amen. You see, it's not just words. When Moses spoke the words of God, the rod, the staff, it was not the words because then that's just the letter. It was the words that were birthed through intimacy. Words birthed through intimacy unlock power because they're connected to instruction. And the instruction will only come when you're a friend of God. To be a friend of God, you're an enemy of the world. Oh, you may say, yes, I have the Holy... You do have the Holy Spirit. But God's just not going to trust certain things with novices because they not trust Worthy. God is calling us to a new realm of intimacy through prayer with Him to prepare us to face the satanic agenda of the day. Hallelujah. And have victory. I want to say, South Africa belongs to God. Your region, if you're in prayer, you sanctified by the hand of the Lord. Intimacy is the key. Union or unity in the spirit is the key. Many will come to church 
for their personal needs. I truly believe we're in a season where God is maturing many of the saints and because of where we're going to, we're going, we are moving into a training sphere where it's like God is just developing us to move in power and authority in the prayer closet. That which flowed through Moses was because of a direct relationship relationship you need to think about that relationship relationship re- released the supernatural relationship released the supernatural power of god intimacy through this intimacy moses was in unity through his relationship with god and he could speak to the red sea And there was a parting of the Red Sea. Through intimacy, manna rained down. Through intimacy, quails came out out of heaven. Through intimacy, God caused drinking water to gush out of a rock. Through intimacy, God delivered the children of Israel from their enemies. Through intimacy, power and authority in this prayer realm of Elijah, caused him or empowered him to call down the fire from heaven. Isn't that amazing? Through intimacy with God, there was the dead that were raised. The Jordan River was parted. Through intimacy with God, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Hallelujah. We see how they walked in covenant relationship with God. All of this is through de- depth of discipline in a lifestyle with God. There'd be many times I travel around the world and I would be with these well-known evangelists. And I could not understand how they would be able to get away with not praying. All I can tell you is the gifts and callings are without repentance. So that can be the gift. But the secrets are what God wants to give. And they take a discipline, a commitment in prayer. With prayer, there's authority. We, in our lifestyle of prayer, will have power and authority. What the nations are crying for is for these kind of not individual leaders in their own human strength, but relying and wholly dependent on God. We see the weakness of Moses in his own human strength as a leader, but then we see Moses when he was in God as a leader, the type of leader he was. Look at the failure of Elijah's leadership, running away. So many people criticized him, but nobody's ever faced a Jezebel like he did. So they don't know what he had to face. But still, we see intimacy. The early church, intimacy. They were casting out devils, healing the sick, raising the dead, moving in power, moving in anointing. Jesus, intimacy. Jesus, before going to the cross, intimacy. Intimacy. Amen. You see, when Moses spoke, the power was not just in the words. The power was connected to what was within him. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Intimacy. That Moses, the intimacy that Moses had unlocked the words in his mouth that were from the heart of God. His connection was to the heart of God. And when words were spoken, it was not just the words. The words were connected to power. The power came from 
the daily discipline. Come on, somebody. Not works, but intimacy. Because you can be in prayer day and night. You can be in intimacy with God day and night. That's why the Bible talks about holiness and separation under God. Our lifestyle must be made conform to his image. Moses refused to lean on his ability. Many of the men of God refused to lean on their ability to influence situations through their personality. Instead, it is through this depth of intimacy, this depth with God. And the Bible said this, Moses found favor in the sight of God. And the Lord knew him face to face. Listen to what the word of God said. And the Lord spoke unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend. Wow. I know thee by name, and thou hast found grace in my sight. Moses knew God. Moses knew the depth of God's great grace. Moses prayed, and he knew the character of God. Numbers says the Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty. Pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people according to the greatness of thy mercy. And as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt until now, Numbers 14, 18 to 19. See, God said to Moses, you're going to go and take possession of the land. He said, Moses, my presence is going to go uh, with the children, is not going to go with the children of Israel because he was angry with the children of Israel. So Moses went into the tabernacle because they were sitting and he went into this great glory, the Shekinah glory of God. Can you imagine that Shekinah glory that many of the priests that would go in there once a year, they would die? And the word of the Lord, this is where he had a face-to-face encounter. Thou hast said, I know thee by name. Thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now, therefore, I pray thee. This is in Exodus 33, 12. Therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way that I may know thee. You see this walking into this place of intimacy with God. Show me now thy way that I may know, know is knowledge, know is intercourse. This is true knowledge. That I may have knowledge of thee, that I may have intimacy with you, that I may find grace in your sight, and consider that this nation is your people. See, Moses had a relationship with God. Moses had a covenant with God. He said, Moses, I will do this thing also that you have said. For you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. Wow. See, this is, this is a realm of prayer. This shows the hunger of Moses. But we that strive to be in that place must know that Moses was on a 40-year journey with God. You see, the foundation of our relationship the basis of our prayers, our intercession. is intimacy. The Bible said that whereby you can cry Abba, that's the Spirit. Children of God, There is an unlimited access 
that we have by the blood of the Lamb into the throne of the Father. That the word God of God said, you may go into his presence boldly and he will listen to you. He will hear you. The important key Essential key for unlocking the power in your prayers is that when you have daily communion with God, you will have this divine access to the holiest place. And in that, then you know the promises of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, I want to read Hebrews chapter 4. Inasmuch then as we have a high priest who has already ascended and passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession of faith in him. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to understand and sympathize and have a shared feeling with our weakness and infirmities and liability to the assaults of temptation, but one who has been tempted in every respect as we are, yet without sinning. Let us then fearlessly or boldly and confidently draw near to the throne of grace, the throne of God's unmerited favor to us sinners, that we may receive mercy for our failures and find grace to help in good time for every need through the Holy Spirit that is within you, that is alive, you're not thrown out, but you are part of the family of God, children of the Lord, and you have the Holy Spirit in you. And the Holy Spirit in you bears witness that you're a child of God. Romans 8, 15, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. So it's not you or your agenda or your strength or your righteousness, or your ability, or your, uh, or, or your uh, what you've sacrificed. But it's Jesus. For there's one God, one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. 1 Timothy 2, 5. Hebrews eleven six. But without faith it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed with the wind. And tossed for, uh, driven with the wind and tossed for, not let let that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. How are you going to receive solutions and answers? Through faith, through intimacy, being strong in this, knowing God, knowing God's character knowing that he's your high priest, knowing that Christ has provided everything that you need, that when you come to God in prayer, you don't have to be afraid, but that he will answer you with a holy boldness, that you have direct access to God and intimately know him. Oh, come on, somebody, that you can receive what you desire. And he lives to make intercession for you and I. The Bible said, but this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore, he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. The blood 
of Jesus shed on Calvary's cross, atoning all of our sins, granting us the right and the privilege to boldly enter the most holy place. This is where God dwells in all, all power and glory. By the blood, boldness is given to us, assurance is given to us that God will answer our prayers. Oh, hallelujah. His blood is what we need. Hebrews 10, 19 said, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, through the flesh. There we have the high priest. He came as one of us, took on flesh and blood, took on human form, knows our pain and weaknesses, shed his blood so that we could be restored. And he feels our infirmities. Because of this, we come before God, bold, unwavering. Thus let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy. Intimacy, people, children of God, grace in the time of need. So you don't have to doubt, fear, vacillate in any way. God is bound to you because of his word. God has made an oath. It's a covenant. God has made a promise that will never fail. The Bible said this, Accordingly, God also, in his desire to show more convincingly and beyond doubt to those who were to inherit, promise, the promise, the unchangeableness of his purpose and plan, intervened, mediated with an oath. This was so that by two unchangeable things, his promise and his oath, in which it is impossible for God ever to prove false or deceive us, he who have fled to him for refuge, might have mighty indwelling, strength and strong encouragement to grasp and hold fast the hope appointed for us and set before us. Now we have this hope as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul. It cannot slip, it cannot break down under whoever steps out upon it that reaches and enters into the very certainty, this hope, of the presence within the veil. Oh, hallelujah. Hebrews 6, 17. With Jesus has entered in for us in advance, a forerunner having become a high priest forever after the order or rank of Melchizedek. Be encouraged. Be strengthened. The promises of God are unfailing. And they are assuring. Oh, hallelujah. It will not crumble. will not break down. You know, without a shadow of a doubt, that there's a covenant that you have with Jesus. There's nothing that can come against it. No lie, no deception. Jesus Christ is our great high priest after the order of Melchizedek and there is authority that when we pray in the name of Jesus that we are an heir of God's promises if ye be Christ's then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise Galatians 3 29 now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made he said not and to seeds as many as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. Galatians 3.16. Secure, sealed, promises, unfailing, sealed, an oath was made, 
And God is not a man that he should lie. God will not lie. God has confirmed his word. God has given promises. And he's given an oath. And he's given his promise. He made a promise to Abraham, which includes each of you that receive him as their Lord and Savior. Me, you, all of us, sealed with an oath. No doubt. No fear. No questioning. Hebrews 6.16. Men indeed swear by greater than themselves. And with them in all disputes, the oath taken for confirmation is final, ending strife. And so we see if this be true in the natural, how much more in the spiritual. Paul was saying that every promise God made, every promise is sealed with a heavenly oath. This is beautiful. That will be honored by God. So God said in Galatians, let there be, in Genesis, let there be light. God created the world by the power of his word. The sun, the moon, the stars, the orbits, the heavens, the earth, all of these by his word. So we can run to him as a safe haven. We can run to him for refuge. We can run to him and we don't have to be afraid because when you come before the Father in prayer and intercession, you know that without a doubt, whatever you ask will be done. Whatever we ask, 1 John 3, 22, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. So everything that has been spoken has been a rhema word from God. People of the Lord, today I want to say, come and do not do not run away from his presence. In his presence, a joy forevermore. We are in a battle. There is an enmity between thee and the woman, between her seed and thy seed. And it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. There is a war, but God is going to use us to release healing and salvation, deliverance and miracles and signs and wonders. And all of this is coming in prayer. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and them that dwell therein. Hallelujah. People of the Lord, we're going to take communion. And uh, it shall be special. Think of the blood. We restore that union, communion, intimacy with God. The blood of the Lamb. God restoring that place of intimacy, of relationship, of glory, of victory, of might and power. See, I believe God's raising up this end time army that are going to move in miracle signs and wonders, that are going to move by His Spirit. There's a get up that's coming into your life. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we do take this every day. But today we take this corporately. We take it, Father, and we thank you for the blood. We thank you for the restoration of intimacy. We thank you for the word that's alive. We thank you for the church that's alive. We thank you that there is a great release that's coming to the body of Christ. Great miracles, great wealth, great understanding instructions as intimacy gives the leading opens the door for the leading of the holy spirit that your people will be sensitive to your voice and you will open up the doors In jesus mighty name we're going to take this thank you lord jesus your body
Thank you for your body. Thank you for your body. Thank you for your body. Thank you for your blood, Lord Jesus, that was shed. And for the power that is in your blood. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You do not doubt. You do not fear that there are answers that are coming. New doors that are opening. Healing in our bodies. Healing of our families. We receive your word. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. The Bible said this. Relationship. Through relationship, intimacy. Jesus came to restore relationship. This is the blood. It's the seal, the covenant. If you do whatever I command you, henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what the Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known to you. John 15, 14 to 15. Continually in communion Continually fellowshipping with Jesus. Obedient to Him. Obedient to His Word. God hears our faintest, deepest cry. We see Moses interceding. God spared Israel. God released forgiveness. In the same way, we are praying for the world. And the nations right now. Father, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, may a new anointing of prayer, may a depth of intimacy, as Moses ascended, this is the year of ascent, up with motion. That is, you called John the Isle of Patmos and you said, come up that we are being drawn upward into your presence, that great city of the north, that there would be encounters that right now, every distraction, every weight, every sin, every guilt, every distraction, every encumbrance, every bitterness, every unforgiveness, every hurt, every wound, would be laid down at the cross of Jesus Christ, that every blockage to their ascent would be removed at this very moment, that your children can enter in beyond the veil into a place of intimacy to see this great glory over the nations. For you said, I've given you authority to trample and power, to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power, the strength and the ability of the enemy to possess the enemy, everything the enemy possesses, every power the enemy possesses from poison to weapons of warfare shall not harm us in the name of Jesus that there's a new anointing of power in prayer, through intimacy, in relationship, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made known, conformable to his death. So I cry out within me to know you, that there's a fullness that must Come forth. There's a cry in my heart that Jesus rise within us and let the glory of the Lord rise within us. Let the presence of the Lord be with your people. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Take the word of the Lord. 
Take this and put it into practice. This is a lot for you to meditate upon. And know that this is the hour where all of creation is actually waiting on you and I to enter into this place. But there is a discipline. Jesus said to his disciples, could you not tarry with me for one hour? Not long, one hour. One hour of your time. One hour of your time make a big difference. The Lord's Prayer is a simple prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. How much is in there? We've got so much prayer material monthly. You can pray and download a bunch of it and just go through all of it if you want. You have the Holy Ghost. Pray for this ministry. Pray for the man of God. I pray God really bless you too because I believe God wants to anoint people to access great blessings and wealth to support this last day move of God. Pray for your nation. Pray for every plan of darkness to be disrupted. Pray for souls to be saved. Apparently right now in the Middle East there's such a great revival beginning to take place. In the 1040 window, which I'm so excited about. This is something we've been praying for years. We pray for the nations. We pray for our nation. We pray right now for South Africa, for Esco. We're all experiencing this. But there's no nation exempt from trouble at this moment. The world is in birth pangs, weather patterns, all of these things. And we can panic move into panic and fear. And I've been with some that their great joy is to focus on the most negative news and some extreme conspiratorial theories. May they may be true. You know, but I can tell you this, the only solution is each of us being like the book of Acts, moving in intimacy with God to see the power shake the nations. I bless you. I love you. Remain steadfast in the Lord and steadfast in the word. The greater, the greater, the best, greater things are yet to come. Greater things are yet to be done. The best is yet to come in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. This is Pastor Benjamin R. Day. And again, if you want to support the ministry, the information is on the screen. Hallelujah. I bless you. Thank you for all of your support, all of your love, all of your partners. Mighty breakthroughs are coming. I know for some of you, it's been there's been something really tough in the last month in the spirit I pick up, but you've been in the, in the pressure and the presence of God is with you. The presence of God is carrying you and the presence of God is fighting for you. That's where the power is. While the power is going off in the nations, while the power is going off in South Africa, the Lord spoke about this. He said, I'm going to turn my power on. So it's time, people. It's dark outside, but it's light on the inside. I love you. I love you. I love you. The best is yet to come. God is with you. And if God is for you, who can be against you? In Jesus' mighty name, amen.